everybody should be working on their game or their craft. Why don't they? Why don't why don't we as human beings do it? Why do we get distracted with the nonsense? Well, work is work. Work is hard. <laughs> work is not easy to do. I never really considered giving up. It was just a matter of always just reconstructing in my brain. Okay, well, what do I have to do now? All right, that didn't work. What what do I do next? That didn't work. What's the next approach? That didn't work. How do I figure out another way to get to this? So, Welcome to the Hard Way Podcast with Joe DeSena, founder and CEO of Spartan Races. We're teaching you how to overcome your obstacles in your life the same way we teach our 10 million plus Spartans to overcome obstacles on the course with insight from the smartest, most accomplished experts from every corner of the world. Get ready to elevate your life today. Joe DeSena here, CEO and founder of Spartan and the Hard Way podcast host. I got Dre Baldwin on. He has created something called Work On Your Game. We should all be working on our game all the time. Where'd you come up with that? I love it. Uh, great question, Joe. Thank you for having me on. Uh, where it came from was a video that I made in maybe around 2009. So at this point, I've been uh, making videos on YouTube for a few years, but sporadically. And I was in a 24-hour fitness here in Miami about four in the morning. And at this time, all the ball players who are watching my videos are always asking for tips and help and advice on how to get better at basketball. And that was just, just a stream of consciousness video I was recording at the end of a workout because I always had my, my little camera with me. This is before we had cameras on the phones and or video cameras, at least. As I just said, well, the reason many of you players can't play is because you're watching YouTube more than you're actually practicing. And I said, well, look at me. I'm in the gym right now practicing at four in the morning. You are on YouTube watching me. Uh, that's why I can play. You can't. And you, I didn't say it in so many words, but I was very direct in the way I said it. And I said, what many of you need to do is stop playing Xbox, stop hanging on the corner, stop watching YouTube and go work on your game. And when I said that, I was really I was just saying it. I wasn't trying to make it a phrase. That was the first time I had said that. And a lot of players picked up on that phrase and they just started saying it back. Like, Drake, work on your game. That's perfect. Like, I, I appreciate you saying that. Thanks for saying it. And so many people liked that saying. That eventually, probably about a year or two later, Joe, that's when I realized, you know what, I can I can use that. I can kind of brand that. I can trademark that and really own that phrase. And that's exactly what I did and what I've been doing ever since. I love it. I mean, when I heard it for the first time, I thought, wow, this guy and I, we're going to get along because that is a great saying. Really, everybody should be working on their game or their craft. Why don't they? Why don't Why don't we as human beings do it? Why do we get distracted with the nonsense? Well, work is work. Work is hard. <laughs> work is not easy to do. And so to work, you have to, there's a lot of things that can contribute to someone wanting to work. First of all, hopefully doing something that you enjoy or something for which, even if it's not that enjoyable to do, you see some benefit on the other side of it, or uh, maybe you're forced to do it. Like when you're at a job, boss tells you to do something, you don't really want to do it, but you want to check. So you do it. So it's finding that if you want to call it motivation or reason, some reason to do the work, whatever that work happens to be. And a lot of people don't want to work. So people just like to live kind of by uh, just by default and neutrality. And I was just talking about this today. Uh, the scientific law of entropy would say that every object left alone is eventually is descending into uh, higher levels of chaos and disorder. So if you're not doing the work, then that means you're probably uh, atrophying, getting worse and moving backwards because there's no such thing as staying neutral. If you're not growing, you're dying. That's right. So you 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 were a pretty good basketball player, pretty good ball player. I was, I was good enough to make it to the pros. I mean, I wasn't on TV or anything, but yes. But you weren't always that good. That's correct. I don't know basketball well enough, but but I would imagine with all sports – uh -huh. there's a bunch of kids that have it right away. And then there's others that just work to have it. And, and I guess you were one of those that worked to have it. Yes. I had to work. And even as I continued to work, it still wasn't guaranteed that I had it. it wasn't, it wasn't like it was obvious that I had it until it probably till like the later half of my college career, it was obvious. Okay. This guy can play, but it's not like, you know, I was playing at the division three level. So it's not like there's a bunch of rewards you get for being good at division three in a sport. It wasn't until I made it to the pros that it was like, OK, this person is successful, quote unquote, as a basketball player. For those who are not watching the video, I'm using air quotes successful. So it wasn't until I became a pro that it was like, OK, there you got some you got a ROI on all this basketball activity. But before that, it was kind of like, all right, you're playing cool. But so what? How did you stay motivated? Like. 
you're sitting on a bench. I read, I read that you're sitting on a bench in high school. You're playing division three. You're not playing division one. How did right. you stay focused and, and motivated to eventually get to the pros? Cause most people I would imagine would have tapped out. Yes. And most people did because I had a lot of peers my, in my age bracket. You know, when I first started playing, Joe, they were around my, they were around the neighborhood. So everybody comes to the playground to play basketball. And most of those kids were better than me because they had simply been playing for longer than I had been playing. But what happened, I noticed this with a lot of young men is that when they would go try out for the local recreational team and didn't make it, some of them would stop playing immediately after they didn't make it on their first try. Some of them might try two or three times, but they all eventually would stop trying after a certain number of rejections. And in high school, the same thing. Ninth grade, every boy tries out. Tenth grade is a few fewer people. Eleventh grade, there are fewer. By twelfth grade, any senior who hadn't made the team yet pretty much was too embarrassed to try again. I just noticed that if I just keep showing up, then there's opportunity in that. Just in showing up alone, I was noticing that. It, the numbers just got smaller and smaller as I kept showing up. So I said, well, the opportunity here is just showing up. Now, if you just hap- if you happen to be good and you show up, even better. But I happened to be getting better, and at the same time, I was showing up. So I had a, a combination of both. So to answer your question, how did I stay motivated to keep trying? I never even thought about it. I never even considered most of the time to not keep trying. I never really considered. There's only one time that I did. It was probably my junior year when I didn't make the team the third time. And I had a really bad performance at tryouts. This other kid who was just bigger and stronger than me just kept scoring on me. So people are laughing at me at that day at tryouts. So other than that, I never really considered giving up. It was just a matter of always just reconstructing in my brain. Okay, well, what do I have to do now? All right, that didn't work. What, What do I do next? That didn't work. What's the next approach? That didn't work. How do I figure out another way to get to this? So my mind, most of the time, just defaulted to that. How do I figure out another way to make this work out? What could we teach people? What do you teach people? that are the majority like i didn't get accepted to college the first time very much like you just described not getting accepted on the team but quitting was never really an option i don't know why i was just wired like you somehow right and so i did it again and i did it again and i did it again until i finally got in but 99 percent of people to your point they don't they just they become an, an, an you know an immobile object they go sit on the couch. As I mentioned entropy earlier, that the natural state for human beings is to move into more disorder and more chaos. And it's basically decay, atrophy, and wither away until they you know, go back into the dirt. And the same way that I explain to people that the law of gravity is always pulling us down towards the ground. The reason we can stand up straight and sit up and hold our heads up is because we have strong enough muscles to fight against the pull of gravity. But if we don't have those muscles, then you just, we all would just be laying on the ground as bobs and we couldn't move. In order for someone to get better and to improve, especially if you're going to stand up or you're going to run and you're going to lift things or you're going to jump, you have to fight very strongly against the pull of gravity. Because gravity is always working. Gravity doesn't take a day off, right? There's no time that gravity is away and you can go jump as high as you want. You always have to fight against the gravity. So which means that it's an ongoing struggle. It's an ongoing process to continually get better. You have to be conscious and you have to be intentional about it. If you are not conscious and intentional about getting better, then the universe says, okay, then you're just going to get the default setting, which is getting worse. So the reason that people don't do the thing or they don't try to do the thing, Joe, is because they are not conscious of what we're talking about here. And they damn sure are not intentional about doing it. And if you don't have both, then you just get the default setting, which is going backwards, uh, going back into the dirt uh, from whence you came, as they say. The reason I'm driving you nuts on this is I've interviewed a lot of superstars like yourself. Ed Hearns, a crazy, crazy, awesome, crazy guy um, in the UK. When I asked the same question, he said, listen, those kinds of people that are not willing to lean forward, play offense, get into it, drive Every single day, they should go in the corner, curl up, and die. My point is, guys like you, guys like him, guys like me say it. Most of the planet just doesn't get it. So what? How do we spoon feed? Like, what could we do? Look, this morning, I I got a I got a a, a semi adopted kid living in my house. I got four of my own children. For most of my marriage, I've woken my wife up and told her to go work out. Lately, in the last two weeks, I don't know what happened. She's doing it on her own. It's friggin' awesome. Even in a household like mine, where I'm a crazy person, I can't necessarily get the switches turned on. I don't know. Maybe you haven't figured, I haven't figured it out. How do we do it at scale? What What do you tell people? What like what do you, What do you say just to, to get that most unmotivated person going? Well, you want the real answer? Or the yeah, good answer? The, yeah, well, no, what's the real answer? Well, the good answer is 
of course, we want to keep spreading our message and have these conversations and get more people to read our books and you know join our races and listen to our speeches. And that's the good answer. Here's the real answer is that you don't. The real answer is that you don't. And this this ain't for everybody. The Spartan race ain't for everybody. Right? Working on your game ain't for everybody. Even listening to a conversation like this is not for everybody. How many people need to hear a conversation like this but would never tune in to listen to this on their own volition? They wouldn't. And the fact of the matter is most people are not ambitious. Most people do not have big goals that require strain and strife and hard work and dedication in order to reach them. Most people's goal, if you even want to call it that, is to just be okay, not be bothered, not be stressed, not be strained, and just you know, live life average. Average is okay for them. They may not call themselves average. Some people even will, but many people may not like that term, but that's pretty much what they want to be, and they want to be left alone as average. So they don't want people like me or you coming up to them and telling them, hey, do you understand that if you did this and this and this and you read this book and you took this step and you had this initiative, how great life could be? Do you want it? They are actually more annoyed by that than they are motivated and inspired by it. They just don't want to hear it because not everybody is in for this. Our jobs, and at least the way that I look at things, I don't know how you look at things, Joe, but the way I look at things is I'm looking for the people who want to do this. I'm looking for people who want it. I'm not trying to, you know, as they say, if you try to, you know, you try to pull a goat up a up a hill, if the goat doesn't want to go up the hill, it's not going up the hill. <laughs> and you're only going to get tired and the goat's going to be annoyed. Uh, so you're not, you're not, so you're not serving anybody. So I want to work with the people who actually want to do the work. I want to work with the people who want to do the work. They're serious about their goals. They're serious about their ambitions and save myself the time of, trying to preach preach to the people who don't really want to hear it. As I say, you know, they have this phrase, uh, Joe, preaching to the choir. What does a smart preacher do? They preach to the people who show up to church and sit in the pews and listen to the sermon. They don't go outside the church and preach to the heathens standing across the street. They they see the church. If they want to come in, they come in. All right. They didn't come in for a reason. So you shouldn't go out there and preach to them because they obviously don't want to hear it. They know what's going on in the church. If they wanted to come in, it's free. The doors are open. They can come in anytime they want. They chose not to. They're telling you something by not telling you anything. So we have to be wise in working with the people who want it. Now, of course, at the same time, we're thinking to ourselves, and I, I think this might be part of your question that you didn't say. What about the people who have the potential? They just need to hear the right thing from the right person. Okay, what do we do with those people? Well, your job is to set the example. And I think maybe with your wife, that's what you did. You set the example. You did the thing. You were consistent. You were just doing what you were doing to the point that you even forgot that anybody was paying attention to you. And the thing is, when someone's ready and they're possibly ready, not even all the way ready, but possibly ready, they know where to look. They know who you are. So anybody listening to this, if you have friends who they need to be reading books the way you read books. They need to buy tickets and go to conferences the same way that you do. They need to be listening to podcasts like you listen to podcasts. They need to be going to the gym like you go to the gym and they're not doing it. Don't keep trying to make them do it because that's only going to push them away because you're trying to make them do something that they don't want to do. You can't make anybody do anything. You can influence, but you can't make them do it. So the way that you influence them is by you doing your thing your way. And as you continue to do it, if and when they ever get into the season that they might be interested They know who you are. They've seen you. They know you. They have your number. They see you every day. They will come looking for you and say, hey, I'm trying to get into that mindset thing. What books do you read? How often do you go to the gym? How much is it? Uh, When's the next next thing you're signed up for? What's the next conference you're going to? I think I might go to one this year. Now they're starting to get in that mode, but they came to you. And this is is the key. They got to come to you. So whenever you're working with someone or you want to help someone who is, they claim that they want to get better. They should be calling your phone. You shouldn't be calling them. If you got to call them, they're not serious. They should be calling you. Those are the people you're looking for. I'm I'm using that as a metaphor, calling you, coming to you, coming and finding you, asking about you. If they're serious, that's what they'll do. And if they're not serious, then it's not your job to make them serious. You can't do that. It's impossible. They got to walk into the church. That's right. I love that analogy that, you know, I've been pulling a lot of goats. They don't want to go up the mountain. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you're going to strain your back. I'm going to strain my back. Yeah. So um, so where are you physically located? Miami, Florida. You're in Miami. Okay. I've got some events and I would love, I love your message so much. I would love for you to come out. You can invite your entire community, no charge. It's on me. We could set up a tent, work on your game, right? We like, we, we could literally say everybody could wear your t-shirt and I would love for you to talk to our community if you'd be willing. I would love to. What's yeah. happening? I'll send you some dates uh, on events closest to Miami and hopefully it works for you. 
Hopefully it works for you because I think I think you'd be a great, you know, maybe we even set up a mock church and they got to walk in. <laughs> I don't know if I'm qualified for that position, but <laughs> I, I appreciate that offer. I would love to be involved with your community. So I uh, think yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. Where are you yeah. doing most of your work right now? Down in Miami? Yeah, I'm in my, I mean, my hometown is Philadelphia, but I live in Miami. I've been here since 2008. Most of my work happens right here in my home office. So I'm mostly on the computer all day. You're working with teams. You're working with individuals, companies. That's right. Exactly. All three. And what transformations have you seen like like when you give this message to the right people the ones with an open mind willing to listen what give me some some great examples of of stories that where you've seen transformation man great question so a lot of people are work people i work with is very we have a very eclectic group of people so they're not all you know former athletes who want to become professional speakers so sometimes i'm working with people who have offline businesses brick and mortar businesses clothing businesses uh clothes business not co- clothing cobblers uh health businesses doctors believe it or not and i'll give you a couple examples so i had a guy he's a financial advisor so he played sports in college but he's not an athlete athlete guy these days but he's a financial advisor does very well this guy's earning in the high six figures a year and he came to me you now he had been following my content for some time. And he came to me saying, Dre, yes, I want to make more money, of course. And if he just keeps doing what he's doing, he's going to make more money almost by default because it's a good industry to be in. But he said, Dre, my challenge is home is not right. In my pursuit of the dollar, I have sacrificed a lot of my personal life stuff. I'm not spending as much time with my wife. I'm not as dedicated with her as I have been. I have young kids. I'm not spending as much time with my kids as I want to, and I'm like 40 pounds overweight. So can you help me get my things together in that aspect? While at the same time, if I have any work issues, I'll drop those on you. You can help me with that as well. So he wasn't coming to me at all asking about how do I make more money because I wasn't, I don't work in the financial space. I'm not qualified to teach him, but I could help him with, he had a staff member who he wanted to get rid of, but based on the way things are set up, he couldn't fire them based on the, the paperwork and he couldn't fire them. But he also didn't want to blow his stack at that person because then they probably would stay out of spite and then he might get himself in trouble. So I walked him through, here's how you language what you need to say to that person to get them on your side, make sure they understand you're on the same side of the table as them. And now you're friends with them and now you can kind of ease them towards what you want. That person ended up quitting so then he could replace them with the person he wanted, but he needed help with the communication skills. At the same time, we started working on him actually losing the weight they need to lose. He lost 30 pounds over the next six months because he was he got consistent with his workouts, had a gym in his house, but it wasn't using it, but finally got consistent with working out. Started spending more time with his wife on a consistent basis and actually you no know, talking to his wife, having a conversation with her. Novel idea. And then spending more time with his kid. He wanted to make sure he did more dedicated time on the calendar with his child so he could have a better relationship with his his uh, children. So all of those things I was helping him with had nothing to do with money. So that's one example. I'm bringing these up to help people understand that, yes, of course, I can sell people on, hey, I'm going to help you make more money in your business. And we have those too. We have transitioning entrepreneurs leaving corporate America. They want to start a business. Okay. Here's how you build your email list. We got to get the funnel out there. Let's get your book ready. All right. Don't put it on Amazon. Sell it directly to the customer here. You can do a funnel. You can sell coaching on the back end. Of course, I can help people with those things. But at the same time, it's helping people with things that have nothing to do with the bottom line dollar of the business. There's a lot of pieces that go around it. And that's why our program, Joe, is built around mindset as the foundation. That is the foundation of everything we do here. Then we get to the strategy. Then we get to the what do I do? This is usually what people are focused on. What do I got to do? Then the next thing is the systemization. That's how we make the strategy work over and over and over again. And then the last piece is the accountability. How do we make sure that the system and the strategy are doing their job? And then how we make sure the people are following the steps that they're supposed to be following, basically following the rules. So our four-part framework is based around that. And yes, of course, you'll make money, but it's always things that are bigger than money, even when someone thinks their main challenge is money. Is it fair to say, if you wake up earlier, you go to bed earlier, you eat healthier, you go to the gym, and you do the work every day on your, like, you're going to be successful. Is that fair? Yes, that's fair. With one caveat. That do, that do the work part, you got to get clear on what, which work to do. But that's the most important thing for people who are doing all those other things. Now we got to get clear on the right work. But overall, yes. I love it. You're an inspiration. Thanks for doing what you do. How do people find you? Uh, you can find me on every social media platform. Instagram, probably most active is at Dre Baldwin, just my name. And then work on your game, university.com. That's where our focus is right now. Work on your game, baby. We're going to connect. I'm going to get you out to an event. And, um, 
We're going to build you a church. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I can put that on my resume. <laughs> Thanks for doing what you do.